Now I want to ask you a question. Let's read that prayer, let's read that petition together. Let us be attentive, having, I'm only listening to myself, why is that? Oh, you need to have the book to read along with me. Bravo! Let us be attentive, having partaken. If I were to ask an English major, what does that mean? Having partaken. That we did what? We received. We took. It was offered to us. So the church is saying what? As a prayer, those who have gathered in God's holy name, those who are baptized and chrismated Orthodox Christians, are what? Partakers. So that is what this prayer is saying. That we have partaken in the following beautiful prayers. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commit ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. We thank you, O loving Master, benefactor of our souls, that on this day you have made us worthy once again of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Direct our ways and the right path establish us firmly in your fear. Guard our lives and make our endeavors safe through the prayers and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary and of all your saints. For you are a sanctification, and to you we ascribe glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who place their trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house and glorify them in return. By your divine power, do not forsake us who place our hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces, and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights. To you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. And as the prayer is, as the prayer that was just said, summarizes everything. If you would like a prayer and you say, I don't know how to pray, which is the aged old question, how do we pray? Look at this beautiful prayer that we just said together. Bless those who praise you and sanctify those who place their trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of the church, meaning the ecclesia, us as a family. <laughs> Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return. We're asking God, and then we go into what? Outside the church. Grant peace to your world, to churches, to clergy, public service, to the armed forces, and to all people. What does that say? That is a prayer for everyone. So if you want, take the book that you have, the liturgy book with you. Take it home, photocopy it, bring it back, and use that prayer. If we don't pray daily, say this prayer daily at least, because it emphasizes what we're asking God and who we're giving thanks to at the same time. Then the next prayer that is said by the priest while the hymn, Blessed is the Name of the Lord, is chanted, is the following. O Christ our God, you are the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. You have filled all the dispensation of the Father. Fill our hearts with joy and gladness now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. Christ our true God, 
as a good, who rose from the dead, as a good, loving, and merciful God, have mercy on us and save us, through the intercessions of his most pure and holy mother, whose entrance into the temple we celebrate today, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable body of this powers of heaven, the supplication of the honorable, glorious prophet and forerunner John the Baptist, the holy, glorious, and praiseworthy apostles, Peter and Paul, the twelve and of the seventy, and all the holy apostles, the holy, glorious, and triumphant martyrs of our holy and God-bearing fathers of Nicholas, Bishop of Eda, patron saint of this church, of the holy, righteous ancestors of God, Ewa, and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, as he is good and merciful God, who loves mankind. The effort and I give paternimo and kiriye su Christe o Theos, eleison que sos animas to the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. May the Holy Trinity bless, guide, protect, and keep you all. And before you sit down, the final prayer that is said through the prayers of our holy fathers, the reason why that is said is that is from a monastic tradition in which they were in a monastic setting. And what do you call priests or monks or individuals at a monastery? You call them what? They're referred to as what? Fathers. So the saying is through the prayers of our holy fathers, meaning the ones of the community. That's what that saying is, is meant. If we wanted to, now, I know I'm being recorded and saying this and people are going to get upset, but the true form of why that is said is the community. So what could be said is through the prayers of our parish family could be said. It's not the Holy Fathers that we think of, of the saints of the church, the Holy Fathers that are referenced in that final uh, ending conclusion, uh, conclusion of a prayer are the community in which the worship was just gathered in. Just food for thought on that. Please be seated. At this time, the members of our parish council will pass our church offering. I know what time it was when we began. We said we were going to begin with the service of preparation first, but I know what time we began to find liturgy. But can I tell you in my heart how great it was to see a packed church when the gospel was raised at the beginning of the divine liturgy, instead of having seven people, four people, and then as the service goes on, more people come, I have to tell you as your priest how great it felt to actually have a packed church when we began a service. Not when the service had begun and we came in at our own time, but when the actual beginning, asking the Lord, and saying, blessed is his kingdom, to have a packed church. You brought a warmth into my heart, into my soul, and I want to thank you for that, because that brought a joy out of me that I haven't experienced in some time. So I want to thank you, and to continue for us to strive on that. Because as we saw today, and hopefully we learn, if we learn one thing out of the Divine Liturgy today, then we learn something. This broad, the, the recording of this is going to be on our internet just, just for our faithful, not just for our church school classes so they can look back and study with their church school teachers, but for us to go back and to review and to see what transpired, what took place. And again, this is work. This is our work. It's a public work for us. And it's a work of joy. So now when you go and you leave work, you're what? When you leave and you go from work you're, and you're on your way home, what are you? You're hungry? Bravo, because after liturgy we all eat. What else? You're tired, but what else are you? You're happy. You did your job of the day. You go home happy. Why? Because you're seeing your family. You're seeing relatives. So when you leave the church, go wherever you're going and go happy. And then people will realize after they see you do this, one time, two times, three times, five times, 30 times, they're going to say, what church do you go to because you come home so happy? Then you say the words of the apostle, come and see. I can't tell you, you come and see yourself. And that's the joy that we're able to have. Please come forth to the center aisle, and then that way you can in enter into our St. Irene's Parish Hall for the fellowship hour that has been provided for us today.